the packages have been piling up and I've been waiting to start to do the videos, intros and all that stuff too, because my computer was not working, but I finally got it up and working just recently, just today. So I, I'm kind of like, it looks like I haven't changed my clothes. I'm wearing the same clothes now. <laughs> I've actually been holding on to some things to share with you because of my computer not working. So some of this content has been piling up on me but I do actually change my clothing. So it's gonna look weird, like two or three days in a row, um, or two or three videos in a row looking the same. So um, excuse that. But we're, we're, back in, we're back in the business, guys. <laughs> the business, business of me making videos for free on YouTube. <laughs> I make no money. I'm not monetized yet, so. Um, but I know some people were wondering where I've been for the last couple of days. So we're back up. And I hope that you really enjoy the video. Um, the, the Today's packages are going to be from Burpee and from and My Gardener. So let's check those packages out. These are, play, I, I order more from and My Gardener and from Baker Creek, Burpee occasionally, um, and some other places occasionally. So let's go ahead and see what I've got. And to be honest, I really <laughs> I always say I've forgotten what I got. Uh, I legitimately have forgotten what I got in these packages. So it's kind of like Christmas again. Or my birthday a little bit early. All right, let's check it out. It's always so exciting to open up packages, especially when you know there's going to be something good inside. Let's see what we have in this package. Okay, okay, what do we have here? Calypso yin yang bean. Okay. The first time I ever saw these beans was actually at a co-op. In a video coming up soon, I'm going to show you what I got from the co-op recently. Um, but a lot of different cities and counties have a food co-op and they have beans in bulk and they used to, used to have these Calypso yin yang beans beans they also used used to have tiger eye beans they don't anymore but i will show you what i got from there recently so i ran out of these and i i realized i had to get more and these are from the um the native seed native seed keepers so i got some huckleberries now uh, this is the same kind you guys saw me open up. I'm pretty sure. I think it's that orange one that might be edible. So let's, what does this say on it? European native ornamental and ornamental hardy, small orange berries. Contains vitamins and minerals when ripe berries can be toxic especially when unripe. Okay. So I'm okay with having the edibility. Is that the right word? Um, being ripe versus unripe because you can just make sure that you are using ripe berries. I want to do some more research on these because I'm fairly certain I got some seeds from Baker Creek that were the same that said might be edible. So I want to make sure I do my due diligence, and you should too. Parsnips, which I find to be much harder than carrots to grow, but I'm going to give them another try. And Love Lies Bleeding the Amaranth. I've grown this many times. It's so beautiful. Such a beautiful ornamental edible. And like other amaranths, you can eat the leaves, but you can also let it go to seed and then shake the seed with a plant. This is not going to be a very big one. Um, but I also have seeds for the golden giant, which I think might be better in terms of yield, but I want to grow the amaranth love lice bleeding just because it's absolutely gorgeous. And if you're going to grow beans, grow something pretty, right? So black and white, I always think it's really interesting like to see flowers and beans and other plants that have the black and white pattern, which is so unique. So, And then it looks like I have some common white yarrow. 
excellent. And aren't those pretty? Okay, so I have a sibling named Taylor. Love you, Taylor. Um, Bush beans, dwarf Taylor beans. So those are so pretty. And I love how they look, that have that pink tone to them. That's really beautiful. So I'm going to grow those bush beans. And of course, I'm always, I always need more borage, borage, or however you want to say it. They are beautiful. And the flowers do taste like cucumbers. Um, so, so, so beautiful. And the pollinators love them. The seeds do look a little bit like mouse poop. So don't be thrown off by that. <laughs> um, and then I also got the Asian sour leaf roselle. So this one, sour leaf roselle. Okay. So this one says edible tart flavored leaves and calluses. So I have been aware about the calluses being edible for roselle. Is it... Are the leaves edible on normal ones as well? Or is this one special because it's the Asian sour leaf? So I'm just wondering, like, you know, a lot of things are edible, but, but not really culinary. Like, just doesn't have, it's not palatable or whatever. Um, so Roselle, and I've planted them before, and I just didn't give them enough time. And in my zone, zone eight, they do need... It says days to harvest 60 to 70. I think they need more than that. I'm not sure how many days they're counting, like for germination and all of that. Um, I didn't have enough time. Oh, that's right here. Six to eight weeks before last frost. So I probably, as a young gardener, when I saw the 60 to 70 days, that's how long I gave myself. And what didn't take into accountability or I take, didn't take into account. I, I'm just not talking right today. I didn't take into account how long it takes to germinate plus how many weeks you're supposed to plant them ahead of time, then add on how many days to harvest. So I need to start these soon. And I wanted to get more of those because I don't think there's a lot in a package. And then this other package here, that's more the blue borage. And I got some more of the Calypso yin yang beans. They're also called orchid beans. So those are really pretty, the black and white pattern. So for Washington State, I guess we could call it the orchid bean because orcas come up and down our coastlines. Let's get into the, the next package. So it was driving me crazy. I just had to make sure I was talking about the same thing. If you watch my latest video, um, from my seed haul with Baker Creek, it is the same variety. And this is something I kind of do sometimes, sometimes intentionally, sometimes an accident, but I will buy a seed I'm really interested in from more than one vendor. One reason is if they get their seeds or they source their seeds from different places, then I end up with more genetic diversity. Also, then I have more seeds, right? <laughs> I also can compare and contrast which seed vendor is providing me with the best seeds and I will do side by side comparisons and then that's where I source that kind of seed from in the future. I also, my number one reason for buying the same seed from multiple sources is because of the information they include. So, and I do a lot of research on my own on the internet and stuff, but um, I like to combine the information that's on the seed packets which often is not also on websites. So um, the information that's here from Bigger Creek and the information that's located here from the Alliance of Native Seed Keepers, it's a lot of overlap, but there is information that's included on one but not the other and on this one but not the other. So I combine that information together and that way I really get to know what my plants are going to be. I am less scared now of growing this because in my last video, um, I was really good at asking you guys, would you plant it or not? When it says exercise caution when plant trying for the first time, ornamental and we believe edible. That scared me. I was like, what? We believe it's edible. And on here it says, hold on. 
history, European native ornamental, okay, uses ornamental, culinary caution advised, nutrition contains vitamins and minerals when ripe, but there's a warning, berries can be toxic, especially when unripe. So my takeaway from that would be I wouldn't have my kids eating it if I wouldn't have a pregnant person eating it. Um, and I wouldn't gorge on these. Like, I'm not going to sit down with a, like I sit down with it, have a bowl of strawberries or raspberries, or blueberries. These are going to be more just for like interest and little pizzazz in your life. Little, a little different, something different. This is not something I would sit down and have a whole fruit salad with. And I have no idea what they taste like yet because I haven't ever had them. So I will plant some. I'm not going to go crazy and take up a lot of space, but I'll, I'll plant a few this year and see how I like them and definitely not eat any that are green. Right. And maybe take one, have one or two and then see how I feel. And then like never eat more than a few, you know, at a time. So, and then if there's any side effects or if you feel not well, then I wouldn't eat it. So this says maybe edible. This one says berries can be toxic, especially when unripe, especially would infer that it can be toxic with it, even when it is ripe. So that's a little bit scary, but, um, they say similar things about ground cherries, but they don't say the berries can be toxic when they are actually ripe too, which this kind of does can be toxic, especially when unripe. So definitely don't eat them green, but also it can just be an ornamental that you'll occasionally taste. You know what I mean? So, um, do your own research, especially on this variety, but all these other things I showed you, the beans, the roselle, the borage, those are all very benign. Okay. So, but these research, research, research. We went to a culture fair, um, a local culture fair. And my son said, could I please show his, his beans he got? They had a kid area. And one of the prizes was that they could get their own Scarlet Red Runner beans. So these are my son's Scarlet Red Runner beans that they nicely packaged with instructions and all that good stuff. So wonderful. I love these and I actually grow these as well. So he's going to have his own little garden. What I got from the Dollar Tree. So I was really impressed with these look actually really good today. I buy um, a lot of gladiolus even though I have tons already just because I love them so much. I love them so much. Um, and there are edible aspects to the flowers don't ask me what they are yet because i have never eaten them i'm too obsessed with the plant that i like them to go to seed and most people plant them from the corms these are called corms c-o-r-m-s that are kind of like bulbs but then they'll have these little tiny baby bulbs tiny 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 ones all around and you can take those off and sprinkle them in the soil cover them up and then the next year it'll look like little blades of grass and it takes a long time for them to get big like this so most people buy their corms at this size or larger and these are awesome um they look very healthy three for a dollar and all of the ones you buy online are over, like a dollar or more per bulb so you're getting them for uh, with tax and shipping and all that, about a third of the price. So I'm happy to get these red, dark, beautiful red. Um, I also got some other colors. I got pink. Okay. I've got another pink one here somewhere. And of course I got yellow. And these yellows have a little blush of like orange or pink inside which is very cool and um the ones that are expensive the really expensive ones i've seen online they have like fancy patterns like there's one that's red and white almost looks like pepper like peppermints you know um some will have really dramatic effects in the middle 
these should be like these are all going to be red okay because these are going to be um genetic clones of the parent but they do go to flower they do go to if you leave the flowers on there don't eat them or don't you do cut flowers and, and cut the stalks off they'll go to seed and it looks like a capsule that divides i think it's like into three chambers maybe more but i think it's three chambers it's filled with these like little tiny papery seed husks that have a tiny little seed inside of them and i don't take the seed the seed chaff off of it or anything i just keep it the way it is because it doesn't do any harm and i'll plant them and it does look like grass when you plant them from seeds or from the itty bitty tiny baby corms that will form on the bottom of this um but the, in that way if you're planting them from seed you'll have genetic diversity and if you have lots of different kinds of gladiolus you could have some mixing and matching um so you could it's like an experiment so that's going to be something that i might try to showcase later it's a long-term project kind of like a land race um but i'll show what i do with that i've been doing it for years where i save the actual true seeds and i plant those as well but i'm obsessed i just love them i think they're just gorgeous and they're like the cheapest honestly of all the plants all the flowering plants that are perennial, I think gladiolus are about the cheapest you can get. So if you're like looking to start and they're easy, like the easiest and the cheapest, the most reliable, um, this is a great beginner plant, but even if you're not a beginner, they're wonderful. So I did get some queen fabiola, which I have not grown before. They do remind me of like, um, what are they? Okay. I'm having word problems today. You ever have those days when it's like the words just don't come to you? Um, bluebells. They kind of remind me of bluebells, but the flowers hang, you know? So that's the size of the flowers is kind of reminiscent of that. And I got some freesia. And I've planted the ranunculus from Dollar Tree before, and they did nothing for me. But I'm going to give them another chance, and... I did go to another store, the food co-op, and I bought some. So in another video, I'll show you what those look like. I bought some actual plants. Um, but that's what the little um, roots look like. Um, and they're saying bulbs. But that doesn't really look like a bulb to me. I guess that's what they're calling them. I haven't grown, grown them that way successfully so we'll see but i love how full the flowers look like roses or carnations just how many petals there are looks gorgeous one plant that i don't see there anymore is the tigridia the tigridia is really cool because um like i popped them in lots of places and i forgot about them and they don't bloom for very long but they're so if you ever see tigridia at the dollar trees i would buy some but I didn't see them there this time. I did grab a few packages of the freesias. So this was a great deal. I mean, and they, I felt these to make sure that they're nice and firm. They're not like, so every once in a while it would go like this and it just goes, and it's empty. It's just like basically died and it rotted out. But these are nice and firm. So these are going to get me plants for sure. The ones I'm not 100% sure on are these. But I know that these are going to grow well i am just not 100 percent sure about the ranunculus because i planted them before from dollar tree but i will let you know how it goes in our next package i believe is from in my gardener let's go ahead and crack this puppy open in this order i actually misplaced it from the order date was back in december so these were basically just replacement seeds to keep make sure, make sure i have new seed inventory and um that i'm really making sure that i get heirloom seed heirloom seeds and seeds that are non-gmo and before anybody wants to t give me comments about it's not possible to get gmo seeds as a home gardener yes it is um they've already announced at least one variety of seed that is now gmo that's for the home gardener and i can guarantee you that others will be coming soon and 
if they're not already. So before seeds become contaminated with GMO, I am stocking up and I will be doing a lot of seed saving. Once mainstream garden companies start having GMO seeds, I'm going to be buying very selectively only from companies that I know do not use them. So, um, yes, I am stocking up on seeds even more than I usually do for that reason on varieties that I don't usually buy because I might not have that luxury in the future, nor will possibly everyone else. So, um, I do know that they're not supposed to, without letting you know, sell GMO seeds, but to be on the safe side, I have stocked up just in case. And I don't think it's a bad idea to do that. So I got this Ayacote or Ayacote Morado pole bean. I got a couple packages of that one. It says it's a, a, a incredible drying bean native to Ochaco, Mexico. Ochaco, Ochaco, Mexico. I should know how to say that because I'm pretty sure my husband has some family from that area. It's a runner variety bean that produces yar large yields of bean pods that when dried, have a deep purple, almost violet hue to the seeds. They have incredible flavor when used in soups, given a deep bouillon flavored bean broth. So that is why I bought them. So I did get two packages of that variety. I also got some more. Yes, it's not my first package of Roman chamomile. I also got more chicory and also... I recently purchased, um, I wouldn't say it's a supplement, but it's like a drink mix that was endorsed by someone who's pretty famous. I'm not going to talk about it until I know for sure it's healthy. Um, but I, I went over the ingredients and I drank it and it's very good. Um, and one of the key ingredients as a prebiotic is chicory root. And it also has Jerusalem artichoke. Um, and I grow Jerusalem artichokes. So I'm trying to grow all the things that are in all these healthy supplements. Um, one, because I think food, like actually getting it from your food that you eat is better. And two, because you never know how expensive those things are going to get, if they're even going to be available and so on and so forth. So I'm trying to get all of my ingredients for my own home apothecary, as well as supplements and things like that from my garden. So eventually I'll be making up my own and I won't have to buy it anymore. I also got more cucumbers because we never have enough cucumbers here. I'll be making quick, quick pickles this summer and I'm going to just love that with my own cucumbers and dill. I got garlic chives. They are amazing. This is just a mix of salads, just lettuces. Summer savory, excellent apparently in potato salad. More butternut butternut squash, but I did buy the Tahitian melon variety that was recommended by uh, I think it's Viking Gardener, the Viking Gardener. Um, so I'm really interested in the Tahitian squash, and I don't want them to cross because I think they look the same. So I think they're very similar to these butternut. They must be um, a variety of butternut. I also got green stripe kashaw. I got a couple packages of this long pie pumpkin. I got three packages. They just looked amazing to me. And on the packaging, it says it's an heirloom cross between butternut squash and a pie pumpkin. And of course, so I'm not sure, like it says heirloom heirloom cross. So that means if it's an heirloom cross, it's not, it once was a cross, right? But it says heirloom. I'm thinking if I save the seeds from the plants I grow, that they would be true. So correct me if I'm wrong, but it says it's an heirloom cross, right? That's how I'm interpreting it. Maybe I'm wrong. But it says it's an heirloom cross between a butternut squash and a pie pumpkin. Or was it a cross between heirloom butternut squash and pie pumpkins? Or are these the heirlooms too? So 
if they're heirlooms, I'm going to try them. I'm hoping that they will be true to see. That's my interpretation is that they would be. I will actually plant them, grow them, and tell you next year <laughs> if it turned out right. I have sweet dumpling and more, 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 more gray zucchini because you can't have enough zucchini. Um, you might have too much, but you can never have enough. All right. So that was my and my gardener seed haul that was last from December. The next package is from Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. And I literally have forgotten. Maybe I have like an actual memory issue. <laughs> I've forgotten. I don't remember ordering anything, but I'm sure I did. I bet you when I bust, once I bust this open, I will start, the memories will start flooding back to me. I don't drink wine. I can't even use that as an excuse. I know a lot of people stay up late at night drinking wine, ordering seeds, but I just stay up late ordering seeds and I have no impairment. So, um, yeah, I wonder what's in here. Let me go ahead and rip this open. So I just looked at the receipt and this was $259, $259. Let's see what's in here and if it was worth it. You'll have to keep watching to see if this is what I got for $259. Cause I just about, I gasped when I saw the receipt and the order. I was like, oh, what, what did I do? Was I, did I have an out of body experience? I don't know. So here I have the Cherokee greasy. These are snap beans. Um, they're called Cherokee Greasy. Isn't that an interesting name? And, oh, these are beautiful. See packages. It says, okay, don't see deeper than two or two to four times the seed diameter. Keep it moist but not soggy. It doesn't have anything about the variety itself on here. So I'm going to have to go look at their website southernexposure.com so that's going to have the more more of the information about the variety itself so that will be good to check out if there's no picture of the um, plant here i'll try to insert that later if i can the cherokee greasy bean and then i have enough delicata but i'm i told you i'm concerned i'm concerned i'm concerned so i am sourcing seeds from multiple places and hoarding my seeds so I went to a seed swap today, a plant swap, and I gave away a lot of seeds and I am giving seeds away and sharing seeds. So I'm not just like being selfish. I just want to make sure that we have access to these and, um, I do give them out in my own community. So it's not like, um, I'm truly hoarding them, but I am buying up a lot of seeds and, and having them here. It's, like I said, on one of my videos, it's kind of like Noah's Ark, right? Okay, so winter squash, and it's adapted to milder summers and cool nights. So our summers have been getting hot, but our nights can get cool sometimes. North Georgia candy roaster. So I've got some seeds of these already saved, so I'm getting some more. Thelma Sanders sweet potato squash. So this is a winter squash, and it's supposed to taste like sweet potato. Um, that's really interesting to me because... I have tried to grow sweet potatoes so many, many, many times. So I think being able to grow sweet potato squash could be the next best thing if I can't get squash to grow here. I'm going to keep trying. Don't, um, don't judge, but I'm going to keep trying. It's like fail me once, you know, fail me twice. I failed three times, four times, a million times, and I keep trying. But I do want to grow the sweet potato squash, acorn squash, because... That sounds like a real winner to me in my book. So I'm really interested. This is a good one. Um, that's not a, a repeat of what I already have. Seminole pumpkin. I do have more Seminole pumpkin seeds. That's a um, really interesting um, heirloom. And it's a native. Of course it's native. Duh. It's squash. Tahitian melon. So this is the one that was mentioned on um, Guarding Like a Viking our Viking gardener gardening like a Viking. I'm not sure which way it goes. Um, but he talked about his Tahitian melon squash. What I thought was interesting is he had cut a piece off and it sealed over. Like it's kind of scabbed over. 
And I was thinking about how if we didn't have refrigeration, that would be amazing. So I'll see here, like I'll try it myself and see if it actually works. And um, a couple of weeks later after cutting it, maybe then see if it's rotten. You know what I mean? Like, like really try, try it out because that would be amazing to have something that's basically self-sealing so that it doesn't just immediately rot if you don't eat the whole thing right away. So the Tahitian melon is a winter squash. And from my understanding, it looks just like a butternut squash, but the neck of it seems longer and wider. And when he cut it, it sealed up. So, um, I haven't heard anybody else claim that it would seal like that, seal like that, but it's super interesting to me that it's worth a try. Um, so I didn't just buy these from this vendor. I bought them from other vendors too. So it was kind of hard to find Tahitian melon. I don't think I found it on uh, Baker Creek, but I found it through Southern Exposure. And I also got the Thai cane cob pumpkin. So I'll try to put a picture in for that one too, because there's no picture here to show you. The last thing I have to show you besides the seeds is I have a burpee life plant order. That's going to be the next thing. And the last thing I share, I got ahead of myself. Um, before I show you the burpee, bo the box of burpee, um, the burpee box. I need to tell you why, how I spent that much money. So it wasn't from the seeds. The seeds were really re reasonable, equitable to Baker Creek. So it got 350, 350, 395, 350, 375. Um, and then like how many I got, right? So how many packages that, that obviously doesn't add up to $259. It's the, um, I bought slips. So I did say I bought the squash. It's supposed to taste like, um, soup potato. But I did pre-order 300 sweet potato slips because, yes, I know you can put your sweet potato in a cup of water and it will grow slips. I know that. Okay. But I've done that many times. Okay. I have bought the sweet potatoes. They were already growing slips. I bought, I bought a few sweet potatoes that didn't have slips and I, I sprouted them myself. Um, like, you know, I grew my own slips from it and then I transplanted them. I, I would get a vine. Okay. And I would get like these little tendrils of what was the beginning of a sweet potato, but I would never get an actual sweet potato, like a nice big sweet potato. Um, it was like each individual sweet potato was like one fry. Okay. So I wanted to get a jump start on this. So these are pre-ordered. They'll come to me when it's the right time and I'll have a lot of them. So I need to mark my calendar. I don't know when they think spring is, but I would be receiving 300 slips, 100 Carolina Ruby, 100 Henry and 100 red Japanese. And even if I don't get actual sweet potatoes out of them, sweet potato greens are edible. So if you don't know that it could also be a really great gray man's crop. If you're into like the survival stuff, gray man's crops are crops that other people won't necessarily realize are edible. So you can eat the greens and the tubers. And my hope is that I, with buying these three different varieties, I will end up getting at least one that I can save tubers from and then grow my own slips for next year because I have really struggled to get enough slips to make it worth all the hassle. So I'm hoping that one of these three is going to be like just amazing. So if you have a best favorite sweet potato variety, pop that in the comments. But I, I got the Carolina Ruby, Oh Henry, Red Japanese. They were expensive, but it was less than a dollar a slip. And I might share some slips with my family and friends, depending on how, how nice they are to me. If they're like, if people are like super like chill and kind, I might be generous. <laughs> so be nice. Have good manners. Okay. So, um, yeah, I probably have more than I have space for, 
but I keep alluding there. I have another property that I'm going to be using as extra gardening area. And so I could put, you know, a dozen of each type there and see how they do, you know, no harm in giving that a try. And, um, I'm sure the deer would well love to eat it. So I'd have to try to be sleuthy about it. Let's open up that last package, the burpee, the burpee package. I'm going to skip the burpee box because it didn't go well and I'm hoping they're going to give me my money back. So <laughs> let's just, let's focus on the positive. This container here is full of seeds that I've been doing on my recent videos. If you didn't see my last video, my seed, my big seed haul from Baker Creek, you got to check that one out. It's awesome. If you haven't seen my Noah's Ark seed haul video, check that out. And don't overlook cheap frugal sources for plant material. And if you want to see an upcoming video on what I got from a local plant swap, you're going to want to click the bell for notifications and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. I've got all kinds of awesome frugal things coming your way. Um, frugal hacks and tips and tricks and all that good stuff. I'll be planting some tomatoes and peppers very shortly. Lots of good stuff, you guys. I've got so many um, native annual, uh, native perennials I need to up pot. I have bird feeders and bird feeder designs and all kinds of cool stuff that we will be doing soon. So you're going to need to subscribe to see all that good stuff. Um, and I'm going to show you my seed collections of like tomatoes, like all the different varieties of tomatoes I have, all the different varieties of peppers I have, and so, so on and so forth and yada, yada, yada. All right. So you know what I like to say, be good, be sweet and grow a garden if you want to eat. I'll see you next time, guys. Until then, God bless. Thank you.